Well, hello and welcome again to another porch chat here on Rare Classic Cars. You can tell it's a little cold. I see the water vapor coming off my breath. But that's okay because I'm out here for you, the automotive enthusiasts. And it seems that people continue to like this best of, worst of series of presentations. So I thought I would discuss uh, one engine that I did admittedly leave off of my best of series. And it wasn't, I would say, it was a conscious omission, but after further review, I think I have probably made an error in that regard. So I always reserve the right to get smarter. And along those lines, I want to talk today about the Stove Bolt six cylinder, the Chevrolet Stove Bolt inline six. Now, Chevrolet and General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, all made a lot of inline six cylinder engines. And by and large, it's really tough to pick a bad one. There are some that are more remarkable. There are some that are less remarkable uh, than others, but this one in my mind is pretty remarkable, not because of its power. Although it did power the Corvette in its early years, in 1953 to 1955. But the motor is remarkable really for other reasons, and most prominently its smoothness and its durability. Uh, I have one of these motors Sorry, some of you don't like when I say motors, even though the Society of Automotive Engineers and MIT says you can use motors and engines interchangeably, but I'll call them an engine uh, unless I forget. In any event, these engines uh, were used in the Corvettes. They're extremely smooth, extremely durable, and there's a little known variant that I don't think many people in the US know about that I also want to talk about uh, and just help provide some color on as well, because I own one in a 1959 Pontiac that I have. Not a typical Pontiac. It's not a Catalina, uh, Star Chief, or a Bonneville. It's something else. So this engine came in two different generations. The first generation, as you can see here, was produced from 1929 to 1936. Came in three different sizes. The 181, the 194, and the 207. But really the generation that most of us remember who are automotive enthusiasts is the second generation of the engine from 1937 to 1962. And it came in three different sizes then, 216, 235, and the especially little known 261 cubic inch engine. The main difference, there are a couple, quite a few differences actually between the first and the second generation, but they did redesign the bottom end in particular to have four main bearings in the second generation versus three, made it more durable, and it already was a good engine but it just made it all the much more durable. So what are some of the key points about this? I think that most of us who are in the US remember this 235 being the standard engine and quite a few of the full-size Chevrolets. And also, as I mentioned in the Corvettes, it was called the Blue Flame six cylinder. And it made all of 150 gross horsepower, which back then, remember horsepower ratings were gross, not net. They switched to net in 1972. Net is with the exhaust and all of the accessories like the alternator, the power steering pump and everything, and the air cleaner assembly on the engine. Gross is with all that off. It's kind of a, a naked engine running on a stand, and I would say the test standards weren't all that rigorous. So the, the gross horsepower ratings are always higher than the net horsepower ratings. In any case, it was 150 horsepower in the, uh, in the Corvettes of the day, and along its lifetime, whether the first generation or the second generation, up here in the first generation was making 85 to 100-ish horsepower often with a 6.5 to 7 to 1 compression ratio. Very, uh, very low, numerically low compression ratios. By the time you get to the second generation, it's getting closer to 8 to 1. So more efficient, more power. And yet, it's, I wouldn't call this engine in any of the vehicles that it powered a race engine. Even in the Corvette, it wasn't overly sporty. It, it was a light car, so it didn't have much weight to move around. But the great thing about these engines, again, is the durability and the smoothness. This is one motor where everybody says this motor operates really smoothly or you, know, you can't hear it running. I can attest to the fact that for these, you really cannot hear it running. I have a 1959 Pontiac, as I mentioned. It's a Parisian, which is a Canadian Pontiac different from the U.S. Pontiacs. So until the mid-70s, the Canadian Pontiacs rode atop Chevrolet chassis, and then they used Chevrolet engines, and in some cases like this, they had a unique engine that 
was used here. In the U.S., it was used in medium-duty trucks and buses. But in Canada, for 1954 to 1962, this larger version of the 235, the 261 cubic inch engine, powered many base Canadian Pontiacs, including my 1959 Parisienne, which was the top-of-the-line Canadian Pontiac. So in the U.S., they had the Catalina, the Star Chief, the Bonneville. In Canada, they had the Strato Chief, the Laurentian, and then the Parisienne. And the 261 is in my Parisienne, coupled to a power glide, is just a phenomenally smooth motor. And when I got it, the starter had some issues. It wasn't engaging all the time when I would key the starter. I took it off and there were a couple chipped teeth on it. And I called the previous owner and asked him, you know, what's going on? You know, why is, why is this uh, having an issue? He said, oh, well, uh, the car was honestly a few times it was running and I didn't realize it and I kept keying the starter so it had ground off some of the, the uh, fine points on the teeth and was making it harder to engage but I replaced that and the motor is absolutely fine and watch the video I'll put a link in it of my 59 Prezi and you can see the engine running and you'll notice what I'm talking about that all you really see is the fan turning this motor is wonderfully silent, wonderfully quiet, and it makes you forget the fact that you really don't have much power. Now these did make relatively good torque. In the 261 cubic inch form, they made about 235 foot-pounds of torque. In the 235 cubic inch versions, they made around 215, 220 foot-pounds of torque. So they were good torquey motors. And to be truthful, if you accelerate from a dead stoplight and everybody's accelerating normally alongside you, you have no trouble keeping up with traffic at all. In fact, sometimes you're actually the first person because the motor is so torquey. Now, if you go to pass somebody, you don't have a lot of horsepower. So you don't have a lot of passing power in general. But that 261 in my full-size Parisienne, it powers the car just fine. Yes, it's probably a 17, 18 seconds, zero to 60 car. But if you drive it normally, it feels peppy, you're not missing anything, and it's absolutely silent. Absolutely silent. It's just a gem. The only other six cylinder that I can think of that has similar oral quantities would be the Jaguar six cylinder, especially the later years that I believe they stopped making in 1996 and subbed it out for a terrible, terrible Ford sourced V8 engine that had a lot of issues. So I thought I would just make a brief video, like I said, on the stove bolt six cylinder that powered many different General Motors cars over the time. And if you find one and you find a full size car with this engine, I would not hesitate to buy it. Again, very reliable and you are going to forget about the lack of horsepower. I know everybody is generally into the muscle cars and the high horsepower and having that. When you're driving one of these classic cars, Wherever you're going, whatever your destination is, if you're meeting up with friends or you're going to a meeting or whatever it is, the party can wait for you. Just relax, have fun, drive, enjoy the experience. And again, this is a great, a great, great engine that powered many different vehicles, was highly reliable, and it's very enjoyable. So it should make the list of best engines of all time, and I thought I'd provide a little bit more color on it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video on GM Stove Bolt Six Cylinder. Hope you enjoyed. If you like these best of worst of series, check out the playlist at the bottom right for more of those videos. And also be sure to subscribe if you aren't already by clicking the circular icon of the 67 Riviera, the top left. Beyond these best worst of video series, we also feature on Rare Classic Cars a number of reviews of classic vehicles from yesteryear that you just don't typically see anymore. Check it out and hope you enjoy. Thanks.